Hi, Jane. Jane? Uh, yeah? I just have a... Mm-hmm. The tips in this video have an emphasis on how cultural behaviors add to the effectiveness of language. They include methods for observing and using daily communication, starting conversations with confident, assertive, and professional approaches, encouraging conversations with active listening, and managing conversations by interrupting or ending effectively. So this is a video of communication tips for health professionals. Is it just for people who are already working in healthcare professions? For people working now, but also for people who need to take a language proficiency test before they can work in healthcare. Effective communication includes cultural behaviors that belong to both nonverbal and verbal language. When they're used for the first time, the behaviors can feel uncomfortable or unnatural. However, they are necessary for rapport and trust to develop between two people in conversation. The more familiar two people are with the behaviors being used, the easier it is for rapport and trust to develop. Let's analyze how some of these behaviors demonstrate and affect rapport and trust. In this picture, you'll notice that the listener is attentive. Her eyebrows are raised, her head is tilted, she's gazing at the speaker, and there's just the right amount of a smile. All of these things show attentiveness and encourage the person to continue speaking. In this slide, note the lifted eyebrows. They send a message of understanding and empathy. In this picture, the listener is using a hand gesture to manage the conversation. Note he's leaning forward, his eyebrows are raised, and there's a head tilt, which all together encourage the person speaking to pause, allowing the listener to clarify. The listener is managing the conversation by stopping it with a gesture in order to clarify. This can feel awkward or rude if it's not your communication style. This gesture can help to manage a conversation. Here we see the woman in the dark uniform interrupting two speakers. It can feel awkward or rude to interrupt two people who are talking. Here we see a confident approach, again with her hand moving forward into their personal space. The example photos all show someone in the healthcare workplace. Remember these attentive, confident, and assertive behaviors can be observed and practiced in everyday conversations in every kind of relationship, with friends, family, when shopping, or during a job interview. Let's now do an analysis of both ineffective and effective listening behaviors. Here are two employees. Jane is sitting and charting. Patricia approaches to ask a question. Hi, Jane. Jane? Uh, yeah? I just have a... Mm-hmm. Patricia, how was it to be on the receiving end of Jane's communication just then? Well, honestly, I felt very uncertain about the whole interaction. Uh, I had some important information that I really needed to give her, but she didn't really seem ready to receive it. Um, she wasn't giving me her full attention, and I was just thinking, should I approach her now? Should I approach her later? And I really wanted her to make eye contact with me and to fully give me her attention. So it was confusing and you didn't want to give this information until she was ready to receive it. Yes. And it sounds like you didn't want to do pay attention, Jane. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It doesn't seem professional. It no. doesn't seem like the right thing to do. Exactly. So you were just left not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you knew it wasn't the right time. What did you, what do you now think you could do to get her focused? Well, I think I could probably move my hand closer to her line of vision and just say, I know you're busy. I have some important information about Mrs. Frost's medication. That way she knows it's about a particular patient, Mrs. Frost. It's about medication and it's important information. So I catch her attention right away. Jane. Oh, hey, Patricia. Hi, 
I'd like to clarify something with you about Mrs. Frost's medication. Oh, okay. The pharmacist just called about the new medication. He wants to talk to the physician first. Okay. So could you put a hold on that? The warfarin? Yes. Uh, we need to put a hold on that until the pharmacist calls back. Okay. okay. All right. Great, thanks. Warfarin for Mrs. Frost. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So Patricia, when Jane was listening effectively, what did you notice her doing? I noticed that she put her pen down. She made eye contact with me. She stood up and she was focused on me and I knew that she was ready to receive that important information. I also noticed that she was listening because she clarified the, the drug. She said, you're talking about warfarin, which is extremely important. Got a little notebook here and uh, call this the observation notebook. It's small enough to keep in your uniform pocket or any pocket or bag or purse. Just now, we carefully observed and analyzed effective behaviors that are culturally appropriate, not only for healthcare culture, but for the culture of English language. Our first tip in this video is become an active observer. Tip number one. Become an active observer. Observe the behaviors that belong to communication. Become an active observer. For example, we noted how effective it was to put down the pen, to turn squarely and look at the person. Write down your observations in an observation notebook and then practice on a daily basis. Make it a goal of yours to practice. It will take practice and may feel awkward at first, just like any kind of practice, like piano practice. You need to do it a lot to be able to do it well. So Patricia, when we are observing, what are we observing for? We're looking for tiny little behaviors. It could be someone that furrows their eyebrows. It could be when someone squints their eyes. It could be when somebody touches their chin. All of these things signal something. And the more observant you are, the more you're able to extract from these interactions. And so you learn, you learn so much more. So I suggest watching people who are really, really good communicators and watch these tiny little behaviors and make note of of them because they pass so quickly. That's where the observation notebook comes in handy because they do go by so fast and you have to be really, really aware of them, but you can learn so much from them. Tip one was observation of communication behaviors. Tip two is interacting often and with confidence with people that you know, but more importantly, with people that you don't know. Remember that as a healthcare worker, you are communicating with people that you don't know and who don't know you, patients and their family members. You are frequently needing to show your skills of confidence and instant rapport building. Practice this daily. A habit that confident people have is to acknowledge and greet others and then, based on their response, to initiate friendly small talk. An example of an easy place to start this habit, if you're not doing it already, is with employees, especially cashiers, at places where you shop. Let's analyze the next photos for behaviors that demonstrate confidence and approachability. Note the confident and open posture of the woman in this picture. She is not mirroring the closed and negative body posture that the man is showing. Confident people use confident behaviors that make an instant impression on others. Note the posture, animated and open facial expression, eye contact, and the movement of the hands while speaking in these two pictures. In this picture, the listener begins to mirror the enthusiasm of the speaker, which signals that rapport has been established. The confidence we saw in the pictures is important for a healthcare professional to show to patients and clients, but it is also important to show to coworkers and supervisors. Let's observe when confidence and assertiveness in speaking up are not used. So that's Mrs. Jones. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Frost is ready for surgery. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> I talked to Mrs. Frost's family yesterday. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Family on board is so important. Yes, they're yeah. supportive, they're ready to go. Yeah, it's all set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, it's really okay. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something we really, uh, yeah, really need. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Okay. What was your original purpose when you were walking by? I was heading to the med room to get medication for another patient. Then I heard my patient's name, Mrs. Frost, and I decided to stop. Mm -hmm. But you didn't interrupt? No, I didn't. Uh, first of all, I was a little intimidated by the fact that I didn't know you well as physicians and you're both wearing the white coats and you seemed quite engrossed. You had information to share? Yes, I did have information and I, I thought it was important, but I lost confidence as I got closer. But you know that it was important information. Yes, I do know it was important, and uh, I also felt that you would, uh, just by standing close, you would notice me. We were really engaged in our conversation, mm -hmm. so we didn't notice you approaching. Yeah. Yeah. So then I just lost more confidence, and I left. Mm -hmm. So you had important information. You needed to give that information to exactly. someone, yeah. so you needed to have that confidence to be able to interrupt the conversation. Exactly, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. because I did know it was important. Mm-hmm. So that's Mrs. Jones, and Mrs. Frost is ready for surgery. Yes, I spoke to Excuse Mrs. Frost. Excuse me, could I interrupt, please? My name is Hannah, and I've been looking after Mrs. Frost. Okay. So she just vomited 350 cc's of coffee ground emesis, and she has been NPO. Oh, coffee ground emesis and NPO? Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to go see her um, and order crossmatch, and looks like we'll have to push back her surgery, a <clears throat> couple of hours at least. Hannah, can I clarify something? Okay? Sure. Confidence and assertiveness in nonverbal communication. We saw Hannah's posture confident and assertive as she approached. Hannah's facial expression was open and she made good eye contact. Her tone of voice was confident and assertive and the volume was just right to get our attention. Hannah's interrupting gesture came into our personal space to get our attention. Confidence and assertiveness in verbal communication. Hannah was successful for a number of reasons. She organized the information. She introduced herself. She explained why she was there, that she was looking after Mrs. Frost. Her description was succinct and objective. And finally, she added relevant details. Setting daily goals is really important. So you start off by identifying a need, identifying a gap, something that you need to improve, and you set a goal for that. So a need or a gap that you feel that you have in your own communication style? Yes, it could be as simple as small talk, initiating small talk with strangers. So let's say I make a goal, I will confidently approach someone every day and initiate small talk. It might start with something small like, good morning, and then the next day you add, good morning, beautiful day, isn't it? Maybe the third day you say, good morning, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, I love your shoes. And you try to extend the conversation. So to extend the conversation so there's as many exchanges going back and forth as possible. Yes, and you keep track of those things. You keep track of your progress and make those SMART goals. That's very, very important. SMART goals are effective because of five criteria. First, they're specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and they specify a time limit. For example, a goal of yours might be, today I will confidently approach and interrupt an employee at the pharmacy where I shop and ask for information about the over-the-counter medication gravel. When you reflect on an experience, you consider it carefully so that you can understand it more deeply. You make connections between existing knowledge and new knowledge so you can integrate it and apply it. Ask yourself, what went well, and keep that. Ask yourself, what didn't go so well? What needs improvement? Identify something specific. Consider what you can do to improve it. Set a SMART goal and practice. So to wrap up tip two, Interact often and with confidence. Make it a goal to do this every day. Make it your goal to get the people that you start a conversation with to continue the conversation and to respond to you. Practice anywhere and everywhere. 
Again, we're going to see both an ineffective example and an effective example to demonstrate. This example is at a workplace. Good morning. Morning. Another beautiful day. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Are you managing to get out and enjoy it? Not as much as I'd like to, but I did manage to get to the beach the other day. The beach? Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, back to the salt mines. Mm -hmm. We just observed the importance of small talk in order to gain rapport with team members. And one of the best ways of doing that is to show interest by asking appropriate questions about their life. We're ready to move on to tip three, which continues with developing responding skills, specifically of paraphrasing and summarizing. You speak, the other person responds. Then you respond to the response. It's like a tennis game, and it takes confidence to keep it going. Practice responding by paraphrasing, which shows your understanding and interest. There are a few ways to paraphrase. Two of them are changing the speaker's wording, so putting their idea in your words, or by giving an example of what you think the speaker may be thinking about, intuiting, or making a guess. Here's an example of changing the wording. Hi, can you believe this rain? Oh, I don't mind the rain. Oh, so you like the rain. Let's listen to that again and watch Jane's nonverbal behavior as she paraphrases what Patricia said. Hi, can you believe this rain? Oh, I don't mind the rain. So you like the rain. So Patricia, how do you feel about Jane's response? It was very positive. She made eye contact. Uh, she paraphrased what I said, so I know that she heard what I said, so it felt good. So the likelihood of this particular conversation, this little conversation continuing past those tennis rounds um, is high. And why is that important? It's important for rapport. And why is rapport important? Mm -hmm. It makes relationships even between people who don't know each other very well, go smoothly. Another way of paraphrasing is by giving an example of what you think the speaker may be thinking about. Try to guess an underlying meaning. Hi, can you believe this rain? Oh, I don't mind the rain. So, you must be a gardener. Jane doesn't know if Patricia is a gardener. It's a guess. Whether or not, it is a correct guess is not important. The fact that Jane has made the guess will cause Patricia to respond to it, to either verify it as accurate or correct it if not. Let's listen to that again and watch Jane's nonverbal behavior as she paraphrases what Patricia said. Hi, can you believe this rain? Oh, I don't mind the rain. Oh, so you must be a gardener. So Patricia, how do you feel about Jane's response, the guess that you're a gardener? Well, I felt that she was trying to make conversation and I felt that she was interested in me. So it was a positive interaction. And that guess really um, allowed me to feel that she was interested. In or if the guess were incorrect, would that change your, your feeling about my response to you? Like no. if you weren't a gardener. And I'm not a gardener, but I still felt that you were curious about me. You wanted to get to know me by throwing that guess out there. It elicited a response and, and a positive feeling. Guessing like this in the healthcare workplace is a good strategy to help patients verbalize what they are feeling. Let's watch an example. Jane is a patient. Her doctor has ordered a blood transfusion for her. The nurse, Pat, has just informed Jane of this. A blood transfusion. You know, my aunt had a blood transfusion. 
things went terribly wrong. She almost died. Sounds like you're feeling nervous about having a transfusion. Exactly. Another responding skill is summarizing. In a conversation, new topics are introduced and ended, introduced and ended. Sometimes the person you are talking to ends a topic with almost no pause and suddenly they're on to another topic. Most speakers of English use only a very tiny pause before they change topics. And many speakers of English as a second language are frustrated because they feel there's no time to jump in and comment. It is necessary to interrupt effectively and summarize the topic that has been left behind by the speaker. Let's watch an example. Jane is an anxious patient. Watch for Pat's behaviors in managing the conversation. So you're asking if I've had the same pain before? Well, not exactly. I've had something similar, but not nearly as strong as this. This is way worse than anything I've felt before. This is really bad. You know, the one I felt before was in the same place, but not as strong. You know, when I was in the emergency room and they were asking me about it so, there. I'm just going to ask you, so it's in a different place and on a scale of one to five, how bad would it be if, if five were the worst? Oh, maybe a three, a three, three, a three out of five. Mm -hmm. In the previous scene, Pat was managing and directing the conversation. She was in control. Yes, often patients are anxious like this one. They talk a lot and don't know how to stop. So the calm nurse can redirect, which can be a relief for both parties. Notice how Pat, in the scene as the nurse, observed that Jane was changing the topic. She moved to talking about what happened to her in the emergency room. She interrupted by moving her hand forward and saying, so. Her, the tempo of her voice slowed, which had a calming effect on the patient. Pat also summarized the topic that Jane was speaking about before she switched to speaking about the emergency room. And finally, Pat moved the conversation forward towards a new topic. Confident speakers put their hand out and say so when they need or want to interrupt. We saw Pat doing this when she needed to interrupt me. Sometimes you miss the little wind down in a person's tone and the little break of eye contact. Two signals that a person is about to end a topic. Suddenly you realize the topic has changed. Don't feel shy. Practice putting your hand out, saying so, and summarizing that last topic. In this picture, we see the confident hand gesture while the other person is clearly talking. In response to your summary, often the other person will open up and tell you more on that topic, just like in paraphrasing, which can be very useful for a nurse. It can feel awkward putting your hand out and saying so. It feels like interrupting. It is interrupting. But it helps you to stay in control of the conversation, which is necessary in many healthcare situations. Finally, let's talk about how controlling or managing a conversation includes the ability to end conversations, even when the other person is not ready to end. Let's watch the end of our example with Jane as an anxious patient with pain. So on a scale of one to five, where would your pain be? Oh, um, a three, a three out of five. And you know, I'm gonna need something for this pain, but make sure it's not morphine because the last time someone gave me morphine, I had the worst reaction, like an allergic reaction. So I can't have morphine. So excuse me, I'm gonna find out what's been ordered for you. Then I'm gonna get it and I'll be back within 15 minutes. Okay. All right, so I'll be back, and then you'll be able to rest. Okay. You might need to watch that piece of video again to see the small behaviors that stop the patient. 
Also watch for my nonverbal leaving behaviors of so standing and turning as I speak. And finally, my verbal behaviors of telling them what I'm going to do. This can actually calm me, the speaker. For example, I'm going to see what's ordered for you and I'm going to get you something for pain. Note the leave-taking behaviors that make it easier to end a conversation, as well as sending a signal to the person you are leaving. The body is half-turned, the hands gesture, one hand gestures leave-taking, and the other gestures rapport, while the nurse is saying what she will do. So, in a nutshell, the communication tips in this video are skills and strategies that can be observed and practiced on a daily basis. They are the keys to effective communication in healthcare. They are effective strategies to use in many interpersonal relationships as well.